fellow hunters of the night. This is Omega Ace Gaming with a post commentary for my No Death Run of Haunted Castle. Um, I actually No Death Ran this game about four years ago, but with the, with the new release of Haunted Castle Revisited, I thought it'd make sense for me to go back and add commentary to this old run. I'm gonna try to dive into this as best as I can without uh, without a script. Anyway, for anyone who's interested in trying to pursue this no death run, uh, my best advice to give you is to accumulate as many hearts as you can. Uh, a lot of people have a tendency to stick with the stopwatch, uh, which I mean that is one way to approach it, but I find that it's a lot easier to simply stock on hearts. Uh, this wall here is actually a lot simpler than it looks, all you really have to do is just crouch down and whip every, every stone that's within the bottom three. Uh, you know, once you do that, you're pretty much safe. You don't have to worry about any of the blocks above that. They're never going to hit you if you're crouching. My first uh, experience with this game, like most people's, was through MAME and its emulation. Uh, although I didn't really take the game seriously until they released it on the PlayStation 2 in Japan. As part of a series of games that were released by Hamster. Uh, and that's when I started putting in a ton of time into the game. And that's when I came to realize that this game is better suited as a home console game than it is an arcade game. Uh, and the reason being, you actually have limited continues. Uh, FYI, right there, uh, by killing two enemies, and allowing the bomb to spawn twice, I actually managed to acquire an extra 10 hearts. Uh, something that's definitely worth noting is every single time you acquire a sub-weapon, you gain 5 hearts from it. So in most cases, if you don't really necessarily need that sub-weapon, sub but it won't, you know, negatively affect your run, I'd say go for it. Um, Medusa's really just a matter of avoiding you know, the the snakes, and just jumping and lo lobbing bombs. Pretty easy boss once you get the pattern down. Uh, I did neglect to mention the bats. Uh, there was a specific location where you can stand, and none of the bats are going to hit you. Uh, for anybody who's interested in watching this video without commentary, I did include the original video in this run uh, in the description. And this is the first of one of the sub-weapon up- I'm sorry, I called it a sub-weapon. Uh, and that was a f the first of one of the main weapon upgrades. You really want to stay on top of those weapon upgrades. If you don't get the sword by a certain point in the game, you're pretty much done for. And I recently found out you can actually just walk down into that gap over there, so you don't actually have to use those stairs. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, it didn't negatively affect my run, and I came out of it just fine, so it's all good, you know? Anyway, recently uh, I was asked what the differences were between version M and version K of this game. Uh, you know, this version here, this is version M. You'll notice that the bats arc more in version M. Simon takes more damage. And funny enough, if you fall into a pit in version M, you die immediately. Whereas in version K, you only lose some of your health. You don't lose your entire health bar.
um, you will notice that I will... I believe I grabbed two stopwatches in this run. And I personally find it important to space them out. You know, a lot of people rely on just the stopwatch, and that's fine if that's how they do it. But me, I like to stockpile on hearts, and I'm actually going to explain how the heart system works in this game uh, in a little bit here. Those mud monster dudes, you could actually jump over them. You don't have to stop and attack them the way I did. I believe you can jump over them as they're spawning. It's, it's something that I didn't do in this run. Mostly because I wanted to play it safe and, you know, damage output is so severe in this. So I wanted to be sure that I wouldn't, you know, kill my run that way. And I'm actually particularly interested to see if there's going to be a reflection in the water this go around, because uh, as pointed out by LitGaming999, Simon does have a reflection in the water in Haunted Castle Revisited. Uh, so I guess I'll just have a look right here, and no, there's no reflection. That's interesting. So, I actually screwed up the timing there, I wanted to, there you go, I wanted to stop him a little lower. But, uh, you know, I'm glad I got it done. It's okay. I gotta point out how the castle's red in the, in the, in the outside here, I think that's a real trip. It kind of reminds me of Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, the movie, and how... Dracula wears red armor in that one? I don't know. I doubt there's a connection there, but I just thought that was interesting. You'll notice the hunchbacks look pretty big in this game. They're significantly larger than the version you see in all the other Castlevania games. I thought that was kind of cool. So anyway, to explain the heart system, I actually, I was supposed to mention it during the boss fight, or heck, maybe after the boss fight, but, uh, you know, small hearts get you one, large hearts get you five, and every time you acquire a sub-weapon, it comes with five hearts. And the thing about the hearts that make it so important for your run is, at the end of every level, the game accumulates how much damage you took, and it actually subtracts it from your hearts and replenishes your health. So, for example, if you had 25 hearts in the prior level, and you take 5 damage, then you're going to get all your health back, and you're going to walk into the next stage with 20 hearts instead of 25. Now, say your hearts didn't exceed your health bar. Like, say you took 7 damage, but you only had 5 hearts in your inventory then that means that only five of those hearts are going to be refilled, and you're going to start the next level without any hearts. And right there, I, I should point out, I did freeze time to prevent the, uh, the table uh, from attacking me with its silverware. But as a result, it does actually prevent a certain ghost from spawning up here, which would have given me my sword a little earlier in the game. Uh, but I wasn't terribly worried about that, since there is a there is actually a sword. Another one right here. These uh these hunchbacks, or hoppers, or flea men, whatever you want to call them. There it is. They drop swords. And <laughs> I paused and thought about it. I said, "Do I want to grab that sword?" And and I said to myself, "Yeah, I better grab that sword." Uh, I kind of wanted the stopwatch, but I knew that uh. I would also benefit from having the hearts. Things got a little out of hand here. I didn't get to freeze time. And for whatever reason, Simon faced the wrong way when he slashed right there. But there it is. So I have 29 hearts. So I should have 26 hearts right here and my health should be full. There it is. So... As I stated before, uh, I like to save hearts aggressively, uh, rather than worry about how much damage I'm going to take. Of course, I, I don't want to take enough damage to where I'll die, but if I can make the hearts my primary focus, then I don't have to worry so much about my health bar. 
And you'll see that once I get to this boss here. By then, I should have an abundance of hearts. And then I don't really have to worry so much about the hearts anymore uh, for the remainder of the game. Of course, if you see any hearts, you should go out of your way to grab them. And here I'm actually approaching a platform that doesn't go up all the way sometimes. Uh, but uh, fortunately for me in this run it actually did go up all the way. Or, well, it went up high enough for me to leap across. Because sometimes, for whatever reason, those platforms don't move up all the way. Uh, and then it ends your run. You can't, uh, you can't hop across. And there's another sub-weapon. Of course I'm grabbing it so I can get another 5 hearts. At this point I've got a ton of hearts. I have 43 hearts. Uh, but of course I'm going to keep collecting them. There you go, there's another 5. And there you go. <laughs> I don't know why I felt the need to do that, but like, if you walk to the right, eventually you'll just kind of face through that platform. Uh, Obviously, I didn't have to do that, but I just, I guess I thought it'd be kind of funny to do that. And right there, uh, once the, there you go, see, once the screen scrolls all the way down, you can't grab anything above, so I just kept jumping to prevent the screen from scrolling upwards. Because as you can see, when, uh, when enemies die on that second floor there, the hearts actually wind up on the platform above, and then you just can't reach them. Uh, and yeah, while it looks like I'm not doing anything, I am actually slashing to prevent bats from spawning from the right side to attack me. Uh, it helps, you know, it, 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 you know, the likelihood of a random bat spawning and just hitting you is, is kind of high there. Yeah, so this boss right here, this boss is kind of BS, because oftentimes he'll throw mud at you in, in such a height that you can't duck it or jump it, and you kind of just have to accept the damage. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually walking towards the right side, because I have observed that it actually causes him to get closer to you because if you uh if you try to approach him he usually backs off but I, I guess if because i walked enough to the right side there it prevented it from happening and as you can see the boss just died i have 49 hearts so i'm going to refill all five of those uh damage slots that i had there and i don't have to worry about it it's great so like i said i highly recommend just you know stockpiling hearts and you'll notice that I actually did stand in a specific location here to prevent these blocks from hitting me as the platform is rising. Uh, although I do screw it up. And I didn't... let me see here. Yeah, see I didn't move fast enough to the right at the end there, but there, you actually can avoid every single one of those. And if you use the ground, like the, the rising platform, as a way to measure where to stand, it helps a lot. And, uh, and I know right here this is super important. There it is. Uh, that crow right there drops your second uh, stopwatch, which uh, is a game changer, so you definitely need it. Or it helps a lot, I guess. You know, at this point in the game, I definitely want to use it uh, against the last couple bosses. So, funny enough, uh, I did stream a No Death Run attempt of this game a long time ago. Uh, at least four years ago. <laughs> and there's a specific skeleton who made contact with my head as I was going up the stairway. And I lost a good, maybe 50% of my health. Uh, and I'm actually approaching him right now. Uh, this time I made sure not to go up all the way. There he is. Uh, you know, I never forgot what happened there. And here, this is the first and probably the only instance where I avoided grabbing a sub-weapon. Uh, because I wanted the stopwatch, and you'll, you'll soon see why. And for whatever reason, that skeleton <laughs> spawned right there, right by Frankenstein. Or, I'm sorry, Frankenstein's creature. And it just looks so funny to me, but... But yeah, being able to stop time, uh... Help you defeat this boss a lot more easily. And yeah, uh, here it is. The, the, we're already at the final stage. This is crazy.
Uh, right there, I just waited for that first bat. There it is. Yeah, there's a bat that sometimes spawns behind you. Uh, I decided, hey, I'm just gonna duck right here and wait it out, and, you know. As it turns out, it did spawn. And here, what I'm doing, you're gonna- you'll observe that my hearts are just gonna be slowly depleting as I'm approaching the, uh, the end of the bridge here. And it's because I'm freezing time, because I don't want to stop to kill these bats over and over again. And one of them actually drops a torch, which I didn't really want. So, you know, I start to freeze time because I don't want to deal with that torch. And yeah, you can see the drawbridge is getting closer and closer, and there it is. Now I'm just jumping and, and spending my sub-weapon so the, the bat stops spawning. There you go. And you know, at this point I had so many hearts that I, I didn't have to worry about spending them. I figure, hey, I have enough hearts, I can still use them against Dracula and, you know, finish the run. Uh, for anybody that's, you know, stuck stuck it out and has watched it up in the, you know, my run up until this point, thank you so much. Uh, I really do appreciate the support. And those of you that watched the original run all those years ago, uh, <laughs> I screwed up right there, but man, I got lucky and I managed to just duck underneath that bat. Uh, thank you so much for your ongoing support. You know, four plus years. Uh, you guys are rock stars. I, I, I would not have a channel were it not for you guys. Uh, you know, I'd lose interest and I simply would, would have stopped all those years ago. And funny enough, no hidden stairway there. Not that I know of anyway. If there is one there, somebody let me know because that would be wild. It's gonna be a, a harpy there, and there he is. There's Dracula. Uh, sometimes I screw up and I freeze time too early, and then I end up having to wait him out, but uh, I did pretty good there. Uh, we're, although right here I did, I think I froze time right there at a time where I didn't really need to. And I tried to time this to where the head would spawn, and then I would freeze time, but I screwed up right there. So I did take a little damage there, but, you know, in the end it didn't affect my run. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching this commentary. Uh, I do plan on adding commentary to all my other Castlevania runs. I have a ton of them without commentary, so look forward to those. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Oh, and this is Omega Ace Gaming, Hunting the Night. <laughs> I need to get into the habit of saying that.